Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. Of course, we'll take your phone calls about whatever you want to discuss. We'll open up the phones to you here in just a little bit. And uh, yes, we certainly can talk about what's happened in France. We covered it in detail on our Friday night show, uh, but it's always another night. New listeners, new callers, you're certainly welcome to comment. Uh, We'll give you the phone lines and our Skype here in a moment. But at the moment, the Skype line is full because we've got a special guest to start things out here tonight. It's Ian and Mark in the studio with you. And we are bringing back on the air with us the producer, the director, the writer, I believe, of Playing Columbine, which is a documentary film in which, Mark, you and I actually appear. This was, I think, our first. This was our feature film debut. He made me three degrees from Kevin Bacon. (laughs) He's a friend for life, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, Danny, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Danny Ladone is here from Colorado. Hey. Hey, thanks for having me on the air, guys. It's good to be back on. Yeah, you actually reached out to us and let us know that you've become embroiled in some controversy at a former employer of yours, which happens to be a college campus. And this all happens to be coming down right around the same time when we've been discussing on the air a number of these just ridiculous politically correct news stories uh these headlines coming out of college campuses around the country uh what with uh, there was an audio clip we played earlier this week of some students at yale one in particular yelling and berating uh the basically the dean of the the college uh, over just some politically correct nonsense and i don't even remember what it was in that particular case which one was that mark that was she didn't feel that uh, oh the safe feel, space yeah she felt that the uh, yale university shouldn't be an institution of uh, education but instead should be a place of uh, comfort and home yeah so i mean there's yeah, been all her kinds of- specific grievances related to the fact that uh, the dean's wife or the the headmaster's wife would not uh, ban offensive Halloween costumes, That's which right. comes up every year as an issue. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. So you've been following some of this as well. And uh, you used to work on a college campus, I presume, out in Colorado. What has happened to you now? How did you get caught up in all this? Well, darn it. You know, I've tried several times now to lead a normal life, but I just don't seem capable of, of doing that. Um, so as you know, I made a video game in 2005 called Super Columbine Massacre RPG. It's a game that explores the events of the Columbine school shooting, and that was the first time that we started talking on the air. Uh, and then, of course, I made a documentary about that game and the the broader movement of video games uh, addressing real-world issues. Uh, I interviewed the two of you and our mutual friend Jack Thompson. That's right. The, Disbarred attorney who wants to keep video games from reaching the hands of minors because it will turn them into would-be school shooters. Is he still out there, by the way? I don't know if you follow him at all. I haven't heard his name in years. I mean, he's really dropped off the radar. Every once in a while, it seems like he'll try and rear his head up to a controversy, but no one buys those arguments anymore. So his days being on 60 Minutes are over. Nice. So So, So what happened to you? I I mean, yeah, the reality is I moved back to Colorado in 2011. I started doing video work and teaching media production, which is my area of expertise. And I was having a great time. We ran an annual film festival every year. And some of your listeners might know about uh, a film we showed two years ago now called Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Yeah, that's right. You did a QA and a session uh, over a video link with Derek J, the star of the movie, which, of course, people can see the, the whole film over at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So, so you were teaching uh, basically film production? Yeah, we uh, music video, short film, documentary, social media, a lot of uh, a lot of production, but some theory and analysis coursework uh, at a university called Adam State University in Southern Colorado. All right. So and, what happened out there? Yeah, so things were going well um, until the opportunity to work there full time presented itself. I was an adjunct, and if you know anything about higher education, adjuncts are part time uh, teachers who teach between one and three classes uh, at a semester in a school, and they kind of have to cobble together a living by teaching on multiple campuses or getting other part time work. Um, it can be a struggle, so I certainly was looking for a full time position for things like health insurance and job security, even having an office, which adjuncts generally don't get their own office. So mm-hmm. um, I was excited to do that. And, and basically, I tried two years in a row. And both years, I wasn't a finalist for the uh, position. But the first year, they didn't find anyone to take the job. 
And I like I'm doing the job. So I said, well, I've developed all these syllabi for the classes. I've been getting high student reviews and departmental evaluations. I'd like to interview for the position, please. And the way higher ed works, of course, that would be way too simple. So they said, oh, no, the search has failed. We can't offer you the job. But I said, well, that's interesting because in the fall, you're offering all the classes that I'm teaching. Who's going to be teaching those? So then they came back and they asked me to keep adjuncting. And I said, I don't want to keep adjuncting. I want a full time job. Mm. Uh, And so they, you know, they didn't really have much choice. So they put me back on for a one year visiting contract. It was full time one year. Okay. Applied again for the full time job, and this time I wasn't even close, wasn't even a semi finalist, you know. So, mm-hmm. and it was just so perplexing given that I was doing the job every day and it seemed to go well. So, I got my own score sheets uh, that actually you can use to see how you were evaluated. And this took some arm wrestling with the HR department who said that they were classified. And I said, no, nah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it's not like it's the, it's not like it's, you know, the, the nuclear uh, codes or anything. <laughs> If you ask an attorney, they'll tell you that nothing is available. And so the university's attorney was telling them, oh, no, these are confidential documents. So I filed an Open Record Act request, and Mm -hmm. they would have had to make a compelling case as to why it would harm the public interest to release these score sheets. So I received them, and I reviewed them, and I found a lot of problems, simple problems, complicated factual issues. And so I took it to the, the school's Office of Equal Opportunity, where you're supposed to go to get these kinds of issues resolved. And I'm sure your viewers and listeners at Free Talk Live know that there's nothing like some good bureaucracy to uh, solve a problem. So I filled out all the paperwork, met with all the right people. And uh, the conclusion was, well, no, there's nothing we can do about it. And so I tried several times to speak to the president of the university. We sat down and talked and I offered kind of a a negotiation. I said, well, why don't I just keep doing video work and teach part-time and we can make it a new full-time job and we don't have to contest this any further. Well, they didn't want to do that. We got a new president in in the, the fall. I went to the board of trustees in October and I said, look, my issues still aren't resolved. Could we go to mediation, sit down at a table and figure out what's going on? And uh, they didn't respond to that. Instead, what they did do is issue me a letter to my house stating that my uh, my alleged behavior was threatening the <laughs> university and uh, and that I was a threat to campus safety. So You're I was fired. I was banned from campus. And if I were to set foot on this public university property again, I would be arrested on the spot. So this up is into, a stunning turn of events. Yeah, I mean, so you know, one day the, you're teaching the, uh, the the course and everything's going fine, and then the next day you're banned from campus? Yeah, it felt that way. I mean, this took a period of months to, to de-escalate to this level. I mean, uh, pretty soon the university just refused to meet with me, and I said, wait, my case is still open. These issues aren't resolved. And they said, no, you're not an employee, so we can't meet with you. I said, but I'm not an employee because of this problem. Right. So there was a circular logic going on. Then they shut down my email account. Then they canceled my video work, which was totally separate from teaching. And I never got a straight answer as to why my video work was like now also canceled. But it wasn't just a budget cut thing. Uh, The guy who'd been hiring me for video was told by the president that he could no longer hire me. Just couldn't do it and wouldn't be told why. Do you feel like uh, – yeah, how many years were you doing this teaching – like in this part-time teaching video work thing now? Two, yeah, three so years? I, I taught part-time for three years three and then years. I taught full-time for uh, an additional year, so four years total. Do you think that had you just sort of quietly kept your head down and uh, you know not sort of rock the boat that, that you'd have been allowed to continue – and that somehow, you know, bringing attention to yourself created some sort of issue behind the scenes where you became objectionable? Yeah, the short answer is yes, and the long answer is absolutely yes. Uh, this happens a lot in higher ed, and it was certainly something that happened in my case. I can talk about it more in the next segment. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Danny Ladane is with us here. What website do you want to plug tonight? Because I know you got a couple of them. Yeah, so watchingadams.org is one of the reasons I got uh, pushed out of the university, and we can talk about that. Watching Adams. Is that Adams with two Ds? Uh, One D. All right, stand by. Danny LaDonna is with us from Playing Columbine. It's Free Talk Live. The 
This is Free Talk Live. And, of course, you can join us here. We'll give you the toll-free numbers. If you've got a question for Danny Ladone, he is the producer and director of Playing Columbine, the documentary about the uh, video game that he made, which is Super Columbine Massacre RPG. Mark, you and I had the pleasure of being interviewed by Danny years ago for Playing Columbine. While we It was right after we moved up here uh, to New Hampshire, if I'm recalling correctly. Been years, yeah. As part of the Free State Project. Danny moved on to uh, do some work at a college, Adams State University in uh, Colorado, and was doing some film production work there, teaching class as an adjunct professor. Um, wanted to go for a full-time position that they were looking to hire for, and then ultimately they did not hire him on more than one occasion. He couldn't understand why, given that they didn't hire anyone else. And that they were supposed to hire somebody, is my understanding of the story thus far. And they turned him down, which is very strange considering he was actually teaching at the university at the time. So in the process of trying to get answers about why he was declined this opportunity, uh, you ended up getting – Danny, you're on with us from uh, on Skype in Colorado – You ended up being banned from the institution. You were essentially terminated and then further prohibited from coming back on campus. Is that all correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Without sounding like an attorney, uh, I didn't uh, have the opportunity for due process, nor have the allegations been uh, been named to me um, as to what I have done that has caused them to determine that I am a threat to campus safety. Wait, so Uh, were were those actually those words actually used somewhere? Threat to campus safety? Oh yes, very prominently. Where did you see that? Oh well, it was in the letter that was uh, that was issued to me, and then it was in the subsequent justification. See, because Danny Ladoni is a pretty likable guy, right? So everyone on campus is like, "Why is this guy banned from campus?" So the chief of police, who actually recently arrived here from Florida from his previous job. Um, And I know the two of you have some experience with Florida cops, so you probably have some insight there. Um, He basically emailed the campus to say, no, 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 this guy was a threat to the campus safety. He made a video game about Columbine 10 years ago, and now he's engaged in all this irrational behavior (laughs) and making people feel threatened, uh, and he could go postal at any time. So therefore, the police chief had to issue a piece of paper to me, and because he's handed me a piece of paper, I am now no longer a threat to the campus. Now, you're probably wondering if anyone actually searched my home or interviewed me or performed a psychological evaluation. None of those things happened. They just issued me a piece of paper saying I was banned from campus, and now everyone there is much safer. And they and they went so far as to actually email the entire campus, meaning every student received a notice to be on the lookout for you? Every faculty and staff received a notice that, uh, yeah, that that said that that this was why it was done. It was an open letter, and of course, I responded um, by copying, copying and pasting the entire directory of campus faculty and staff email addresses and writing a point by point rebuttal um, as to what was uh, incorrect here. But I think what's relevant is that I was banned from campus two days after launching our first set of articles for a website that I created called watchingadams.org. Watching Adams was created because the institution for years and years has just really failed to be a um, self-correcting administration. So we, in our first set of articles, identified that the university was probably violating the Colorado Wage Act because it wasn't paying people on time. It was violating the Open Records Act because it was taking way too long to respond to public information requests. Oh, well, no wonder they went after you. I mean, this is why they went after me, right? You didn't have tenure, right? So they could just boot you out the door and there's no consequence to them for it. I mean, I wasn't even an employee at that point, but I was not leaving. And so the president emailed me on a Tuesday to say I was no longer allowed to attend, quote, administrative meetings. And those weren't subject to open records. Danny, if you just keep your mouth shut and be a good little boy, then you Mm. could have a nice uh, tenured uh, professor position. No, they weren't even – they weren't moving forward on that. I don't know where you come up with that um, conclusion. They are not giving tenured professorships very often anymore. Well, they were looking to hire a full-time person. They're just stringing people along. You think so? Okay. So what Mark says is true. The new faculty majority is adjunct positions, Mm. and uh, sadly, many adjuncts live below the poverty line. So the administrators are living large. They're getting paid decent salaries, nice benefits. (laughs) 
Funny you should ask, because for years, Adam State was not reporting its compensation data to the state, even when it was supposed to. So I filed an open record act, got all that data, posted it at Watching Adams, <laughs> and you can see that while most faculty and staff make about 70 to 80 percent of people in the same job at other schools, the, there are like 24 administrators that are making over 100 percent of what they make at other schools. Wow. I, I think I think we've Sweet. found a clue. <laughs> now they will say, Oh no no no, has nothing to do with his website. He's just a threat to the safety right. of campus, so he had to be removed. Right. And by the way, for people that don't know, Super Columbine Massacre RPG, I presume it's still downloadable online. Is that is that correct? Columbinegame dot com. You can get it today. Yeah, so I mean this is basically a political statement uh of yours, just kind of looking at the whole tragedy. It's not anything that advocates violence or in, in any way, shape or form. I mean I having played it, I think I, I think I can, you know, fairly certain say that uh, about playing about it's also the old game. style video games i mean it's not like it's like a talking... 16 bit rpg style. right this is stuff from the early 90s top down overhead perspective not like a first person shooter or something yeah like i don't that. know how um probably our audience doesn't know what that terminology means but yeah. a video game from the early 90s probably sums it up so i mean what <laughs> it's just ridiculous danny i'm sorry this uh, has happened to you but at least you're you know you're putting it out there you're getting the word out watching adams.org is your website what's the next step for you well, I've done a number of things. I think the university made a mistake by coming after someone like me and not understanding who I am, right? <laughs> I'm the guy that survived these controversies before, and I have a degree in mass communication. So, you know, I did what any reasonable person in my position would do. I started contacting the press, and so the university has gotten all this negative press. Um, I've contacted the ACLU, who's now investigating the case. Hmm. I've filed a uh, I've filed a case with the uh, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. So Adam State is essentially now under federal investigation, um, and wah, wah, you know. Wah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, this is this is coming back in a major way. And you'll like this. The university president did an interview with the local paper last week. And when she was asked why I was such a threat, she said that uh, I had been engaging in harassment and terrorism against the university. <laughs> Apparently, uh, terrorism reve revealing what the administrators make versus yeah. what the uh, professors make <laughs> is terrorism. Now, Mark and Ian, I don't know. Maybe you've been called a terrorist before, but this was a first time for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been accused of th threatening, intimidating, and harassing the uh, the government bureaucrats here in Keene. It sounds very, very similar. Well, I'm I'm sure you'll keep us up to date, uh, Danny, and your uh, fans and people who are curious can go to watchingadams.org to follow along there. And I really appreciate you coming on Free Talk Live to update us on the story tonight. Thanks for having me. Thanks for your time. Danny Ladane there in Colorado. And you can join us. The Skype is now open for you. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. What do you want to talk about the insanity continuing to develop on college campuses across the country or what's going on in France uh, with ISIS now apparently accepting responsibility or taking responsibility for the attacks yesterday in France? Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. <laughs> 